Lír, Madam Minister, Mr. Minister, uh, Mr. Uh, Deputy uh, President, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues. If you want to understand something, observe its beginning and follow its development. This idea from one of the most important scientists of antiquity, Aristoteles, can, I believe, be applied to many areas of life, including the examination of whether a law has lived up to its expectations. Uh, this summer was the 10th anniversary of the adoption of Parliament of the new Criminal Code. Enough time has already passed since the end into force of the Criminal Code to allow us to draw some conclusions about its effectiveness. Recalling Aristotle's thoughts, it's therefore worth going back to the beginning and assessing some experience gained since the entry into force the new law to see whether the objectives set by the new law have been achieved. In my presentation, I would also like to briefly, really briefly, address some challenges of substantive criminal law that we will face in the future and how uh, the criminal code will be able to meet them. In the following, I would like uh, to briefly discuss the origins and development of certain provisions uh, in the current criminal code that have brought changes uh, with respect to the most important constitutional task of the prosecution service, namely the enforcement of the state's criminal claims and which, in my view, have contributed to the achievement of the legislative objectives. In the new criminal code, the legislator lowered the minimum age of criminal responsibility to 12 years for certain offenses. The change divided both lay and professional public opinion. Some saw the amendment as a violation of children's rights. Others said it was necessary on the basis of practical experience. I believe uh, in the last 10 years uh, have proven this, that the solution chosen by the legislator was the right one. The law has created an appropriate transition in the criminal treatment of child offenders and juvenile offenders over the age of 14. The normative solution, which left uh, it to the discretion of the judiciary to determine the capacity to see consequences of uh, one's acts uh, in specific cases concerning this age group has made it possible to ensure that the children's rights uh, are not violated while at the same time it has helped to reduce crime. Since the criminal court entered into force, uh, the prosecution service has filed indictments against close uh, to 180 juvenile offenders who had committed crimes between the ages of 12 and 14 years. In most cases, the indicated crimes included robbery, plundering, assault against a person entrusted with public functions, but particularly grave crimes against life also occurred. The past 10 years proved that in order to protect interests of the society, Tools of criminal law cannot be avoided when handling grave crimes committed by the mentioned age group, but educational objectives fully need to be taken into account, of course. The new criminal code contains another amendment in connection with obstacles to punishability, which is worth mentioning. The need of society to have stronger guarantees available for victims to prevent unlawful attacks could be felt even when concrete cases were handled. Similarly, to the low world minimum age limit of criminal responsibility, situational lawful self-defense, which was introduced as a novelty, generated significant debates. Potential victims' rights to life and bodily integrity have clearly strengthened by the fact that legislation has created an 
irrebutable presumption of law which states that cases set forth by the criminal court have to be regarded as if the attack also aimed at killing the person who was defending himself. The former normative solutions uh, proved to be unrealistic in several aspects, and they often unfairly protected the unlawful attacker, even when looked at in terms of the natural sense of law. Therefore, when legislating the new law, legislators had to take into consideration whether, similarly to the former provisions of substantive law, it is still the person defending himself who should take higher risk against the attacker. Experience confirmed the legislator's view even in this case. The, this legal instrument works effectively without the infringement of fundamental rights, and the currently effective regulation of self-defense uh, clearly intensifies the efforts to reduce crimes. As far as the prosecution service is concerned, no cases can be mentioned where the use of situational lawful self-defense led to exercising excessive arbitrary power. The legal instrument works in practice within the framework of rule of law. One of the codification guidelines for the new criminal code implied by criminal policy was to have uh, stricter provisions uh, as was mentioned by uh, uh, Minister Pintier. This process already started in the final years of the former criminal code and consistently continued with the legislation of new code as well. Having gathered practical experience, we can confidently say that making legal provisions stricter was not an arbitrary and excessive measure. Statistical data also show that the reduction of crimes uh, within constitutional limits has successfully started. Several tendencies could be highlighted in connection with making provisions stricter, but time constraints allow me to mention only a few. It is worth invoking legislative efforts which aim at imposing stricter sanctions on perpetrators who are considered to be recidivist uh, in terms of substantial criminal law, especially if they also committed violent crimes earlier. The normative conditions for this are uh, given, and the prosecution service tries to enforce this uh, in all cases, whoever the final outcome, of course, uh, is up to the court. It was a consistent legislative effort to provide a higher level of protection for victims who are vulnerable in some ways. Considering partly the formal experience of law application, legislators modified the regulation of sexual criminal offenses and modified the system of limitation periods in even of certain crimes committed against children. This latter modification is significant, as even recently one could see cases where grave sexual crimes were committed against children, while the former provisions of law were effective, and thus in the lack of special provision of law prescribing a longer limitation period, the perpetrator couldn't be held liable. So, Experience again underlined the efficiency of the new provisions. Uh, the criminal law provides better and more effective protection for children today. The regulation of the offense uh, to the injury of persons with a limited ability due to their old age uh, or disability as a qualifying circumstance proved to be a similarly relevant uh, or valid in innovation. Even when the criminal code was created, there were regular cases in practice, for example, street robberies, when the victims were especially elderly people. However, the legislator didn't even suspect at that time that a few years later, typical forms of crimes against property 
would spread, spread the targets of which would be specifically the older age group. Nowadays, innumerable cases occur the subject of which is the so-called grandchild fruits. Uh, you know it, uh, uh, I uh, believe in. Uh, the effectiveness of the criminal action against these cases is enhanced uh, by the fact that the aforementioned qualifying circumstance can also be established in the case of fraud, which allows stricter penalty to be imposed. Of course, the practical fate and success of a new legal institution is also uncertain for legislators. The budget fraud can be mentioned as an example for this crime. The complete legal unity created in the case of uh, this legal situation proved to be useful from the point of international cooperation. At the same time, it is still a problem for domestic uh, law application in many cases to this day. It's difficult to handle, for example, situations where a given person in the same period carries out different acts damaging the budget in different offender forms. In addition, special attention must be paid to the issue of the judged matter, carefully considering whether there is a space for indictment or retrial if new acts are discovered. In the followings, it is worth briefly examining how the criminal code has developed since its entry into force. I consider useful uh, the legislator's attitude, which aims the reviewing periodically uh, the actuality uh, of criminal substantive law provisions by evaluating uh, the experience of law practitioners. Uh, without going into details in view of the uh, shortness of time, uh, I would like to point out the prosecution service uh, provided serious professional support during the re regulation of the legal status uh, of money laundering and uh, human trafficking. Experience shows that the new facts correspond to the international expectations. Uh, in addition, they can be applied more smoothly and efficiently in practice. What are the challenges of the future? Uh, in the last part of my presentation, I would like to give a few thoughts of some uh, substantive legal issues that still need to be resolved in the present uh, and in the future. This topic is of a special importance because our surrounding economic, social, technological environment constantly changing and significantly faster than before to which the penal substantive law rules must be also adapted. There are difficulties uh, that we have to face uh, as law appliers already. First of all, I could mention the appearance of weakness, uh, uh, whose legal status is still uncertain, despite the fact that these weakness are already present on roads. In the absence of clear regulations, the prosecution service uses legal interpretation methods uh, to try judge uniformly the cases affected uh, by this uh, and in accordance with the principles uh, of rule of law, whoever legislation will be inevitable. The evaluation of cryptocurrencies uh, can also be classified as one of the substantive law issues to be resolved. This means of payment like other types of them, uh, can be the object of crimes, but at the same time, they can also be used to realize property acquired through criminal way. Whatever the case may be, it is questionable whether the available substantive legal solutions can be applied. I can almost certainly say that this problem will not be solved by methods of law application alone. Finally, uh, I would like to touch on two issues regarding the near, near future. On the one hand, uh, the issue of artificial intelligence in connection with, with the classic dogmatic principles of criminal law will surely not be applicable. 
the commercial appearance of fully self-driving cars and the operation of economic companies managed by artificial intelligence will fundamentally change the usual criminal law thinking. On the other hand, we have to also prepare uh, that the justice system be able to respond effectively to the new variations of economic crime. In my opinion, the 10-year-old criminal court provides a sufficient basis for solving challenges of future, future substantive law, but the progress must be continuous. The prosecution service is usually the first uh, which faces the substantive law difficulties uh, of a new phenomenon. We are who have to decide uh, which substantive law relevant facts should cover the proof. For effective law enforcement uh, will continue to be indispensable that the legislators uh, constantly pay attention to the signals uh, of the law enforcers and legislation be modified to changing uh, circumstance in time. Very important in time. Thank you for your kind attention.